Hey, welcome to this video for Chem 161, looking at some Chapter 5 content where we'll uh, introduce the concept of valence shell electron pair repulsion to help us determine the three-dimensional structure of molecules. So the fundamental ideas behind valence shell electron pair repulsion, underlining the starting letters there, typically referred to as VESPER for short in chemistry language, is to try to determine the three-dimensional structure knowing that there will be valence electron pairs that consist of both bonding and unpaired electrons that occupy space, okay? These will end up repelling one another, and in order to, to minimize that interaction, we maximize the distance or the angle between these, okay? So just to put some terms here, so we've said that we're going to see that there are valence electron pairs, okay, so these will be shown to be lone pairs or bonded atoms or bonded sets of atoms, okay, and these will be both bonding and unpaired. And we know that these occupy space. Second, because there's electrons in these features, in these electron pairs, they're going to repel one another. So these electron pairs repel one another. Okay, so hopefully you're picking up on the acronym right there, valence shell electron pair repulsion. And in order to minimize the interaction, we're going to maximize distance or angle between the two. Okay, so repulsion ends up minimized by maximizing the sometimes termed distance. Angle is another appropriate term here between electron pairs. And this is what's going to take things like Lewis structures and turn them into three-dimensional structures as we occupy three-dimensional space rather than two-dimensional space. So this ultimately, this gives the geometric shapes that determine The molecular geometry. All right. Okay, so to help us with those ideas, um, you'll see that we'll make sense of a lot of the terms in the table over here. And so let's just clear up some room for our next points here. Okay, so um, we need to understand what an electron pair geometry is, what a molecular geometry is, and ultimately a steric number. Okay, so let's start with some of those terminologies. We've seen the, the term um, steric number, 
down below. So let's look at that. So the steric number sometimes termed Sn, this is equal to the number of regions of electrons around a central atom And so if we take a look, for example, at looking at, for example, carbon dioxide. Previously, you would have predicted the Lewis structure as drawn. What we'll do is pick a central atom like the carbon and we'll count regions that are associated with electrons. So we'll see here that the doubly bonded oxygen here is one electron pair, and this is another electron pair. In other examples, we've looked at BF3 as an example. And so here we have three bonded oxygen atoms. So there's one electron group, another electron group, and another electron group. So we're counting bonded atoms as, um, as electron pairs, okay? And this will help us identify the number of regions around a central atom like boron or carbon here. Okay. Good. Um, the next thought here is that we're going to have electron pair geometry and a molecular geometry that are different. So let's start with electron pair geometry. Sometimes termed EG. And this is the geometry of a molecule not differentiating between a bond and an electron pair. So, for example, in a molecule like ammonia, we can see here that there are three bonded hydrogen atoms, one, two, three. Those are three electron groups. And now we have this lone pair that we're going to count as another one. So to help us describe the electron geometry, we're going to count all four of these features the same. Okay, one, two, three, four. We're not differentiating between lone pairs and bonded atoms like hydrogen or even other uh, atoms at that hydrogen position or extended structures emanating from that hydrogen position in other examples. Okay, so that's how we determine the electron pair geometry. That's different than the molecular geometry. Sometimes termed mg, where this is the geometry of a molecule. where we do differentiate 
between bonded atoms or features and electron pairs. Okay, so if we were counting to describe the molecular geometry, we would be looking at the bonded atoms and not observing the lone pair, okay? So you can see here that there's potential for there to be a difference between electron geometry and molecular geometry depending on how we um, count electron pairs for the electron geometry or for the molecular geometry. Okay, so let's look at some examples and see if this helps us root some of these thoughts. Okay, so we can ask a question like, uh, what is the electron group and the molecular geometry of water, H2O. Okay, so in order to do this, the first few steps are, first thing to do are going to be to draw the correct Lewis structure. So please remind yourself of content from chapter four and the key rules and ideas there, okay? So looking at that, what we would have for, for water in that case would be something like the following down below. And so we would begin with that. Okay, uh, the, f the subsequent step to determine the electron geometry and molecular geometry of a molecule is to describe the steric number, identify the steric number. So ID the steric number, SN. Well, we saw that the steric number was the number of regions of electrons around a central atom. Okay, so here we'll identify the oxygen as the central atom. Okay, and what we want to do is now think about all the electron features or electron pairs, as we call them, around that. So clearly there's a lone pair here for one. There's another lone pair here for a second. Bonded atom of hydrogen there and another one there. So we are seeing four electron features, two lone pairs, top and bottom, and two bonded atoms via electrons in those bonds, represented by a dash, for an additional two. So our steric number for this is going to be one, two, three, four. So we are dealing with a steric number of four to help us for the electron group and molecular geometry for this example, okay? Good. Uh, the next step here is going to be to determine the electron pair geometry. Now recall that we are not going to ignore lone pairs, but we're going to count them in a, and use them to determine the geometry here, okay? So what we do is we consider what we have. So in this case, we have two lone pairs and two bonded atoms. So this next row down below can help with provide some syntax. So you can see in the diagram that A refers to the central atom. Okay. And X refers to the actual bonded atoms. So in the middle case here, 
under SN4, we're looking at three bonded atoms represented by arbitrary atom X on a central arbitrary atom A. And at the top, we've got E. That represents the lone pairs. So actually, the case in the category of steric number four that best represents what we have for water is a scenario where we have two electron groups represented by lone pairs and two bonded atoms X2. So the syntax for that, the type, would be AX2, E2 to represent central atom A, two bonded atoms X2, two lone pairs E2. Okay, so this helps us settle on an ultimate electron group geometry that is tetrahedral. Okay, so as we move all four of these groups that in the Lewis structure are flat in the plane of the board here, as we move these to occupy three dimensional space, for example, moving this hydrogen back behind the board, perhaps moving this hydrogen forward in front of the, bo the board and opening up the angle between the lone pairs, we can generate something that looks like a, j a jack almost, if you've played jacks before, or uh, better termed, a tetrahedron. So by moving four appendages equally away from one another, we end up with greater angles in here, greater than 90 degrees, which is what we started with if in the Lewis structure where things appeared flat. <coughs> okay, so the type helps us memorize the tetrahedral um, here where we have four appendages, four electron pairs moved away from one another. You can see it doesn't matter what the type is, we'll use the word tetrahedral for the electron group for all of them, it provided that we are dealing with a steric number of four. Okay, next we need to settle on the electron pair geometry, uh, the molecular geometry, molecular geometry. Okay, so the answer in uh, C was that we were dealing with tetrahedron or tetrahedral geometry for the electron pair geometry. And we now know that the molecular geometry can differ if there are electron pairs, lone pairs, to ignore. Okay, so the case for water has two lone pairs, E2. And so we're in the last category. And notice our diagram for that has changed. We've now omitted the E's from our diagram here. And so we're now just showing the atoms, but keeping all the angles and, and features the same. So this is now describing a bent molecule, which is what we'll use to describe the molecular geometry for water. So you'll see here the tetrahedral uh, electron pair geometry is an architecture where we use information including the lone pairs, so we're not distinguishing between lone pairs and bonded atoms. And we're using each one of those features to help describe a shape at that central atom, and it's going to be tetrahedral regardless of whether we're counting electron lone pairs or bonded atoms. All the way across in the options there. However, in when we describe the molecular geometry, we simply kind of erase those lone pairs and look at what's left. We only have bonded atoms at that point, and we have, in the case of water, a bent molecule there. And that's how we determine electron pair geometry and molecular geometry um, for molecules. Just as a quick note of an example where we sometimes see some complications. We'll clean this up. Going back to that earlier example of CO2, mentioned briefly for the example of CO2, 
that the central carbon had, there's our central carbon, we had one and two features bonded. So that's a steric number of two. We can see here that we will never have lone pairs if the steric number is as low as two. So it's an AX2. We will always describe that as linear and there will never be any lone pairs on the central carbon or a, other molecules that also adopt an electron geometry that's linear. There will never be lone pairs to eliminate, so these two will match and we'll end up with a linear molecular geometry as well. So note here that even though we are double bonded, we've counted the whole feature here as a single electron pair group and likewise over here. So even though we are double bonded, we're still counting that as one. So this is a steric number of one, and then there's the second, a steric number of two. Okay. Uh, another example we saw in chapter three was COCl2. So this might be a moment where you pause the video and try to predict the SN number, try to determine the electron group word or description, and then the molecular geometry as well, okay? Okay, so hopefully you've seen that there is one bonded atom at the central carbon, another bonded atom at the central carbon, and a third bonded atom atop. So this has three bonded atoms, no lone pairs at the central carbon. So we are dealing with an SN of three. And based counting each of those groups, all the same, we're dealing with an AX3 scenario. So this is a trigonal planar electron pair geometry, meaning that all three of these features, one, two, three, line of plane flat, and they're exactly a certain angle from one another. In this case, the maximum angle to push these things away from one another is 120 degrees, which we see reflected down here for the ideal bond angle. A moment ago, we saw water. The ideal bond angle was 109.5, and this will get tuned depending on whether or not we're dealing with scenarios that have lone pairs. We'll touch on that later. But ideal bond angle, pretty close to 109.5 typically there. Okay, um, so again, we see here that even though we've got a double bond on the at oxygen atop, that we are still counting that as only one electron group, and that's why we are at an SN of three there. So the electron geometry here is going to be trigonal planar, And looking down below, where we might eliminate central uh, lone pairs at the central atom, there are none to eliminate, so we are still going to be at left, and so we're going to adopt the exact same name for the molecular geometry and be trigonal planar as well. 